<laughs> so, we're going to learn how to find the shortest path between two skew lines. Knowing that the shortest path between two skew lines is always going to be perpendicular to both of the lines that we're looking at here. Now, line one defined as R1. What point does it pass through, Leishman? One, two, three. And what directions are pointing in? Seven, one, negative two. Excellent. And then line two, Patrick, what point does it pass through? Three, two, one. Um, and and what directions are pointing? Negative six, eight, negative four. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the process to be able to find the shortest distance between the two lines. Now I could go through all of the algebra and how to do this and we could remember all of the steps but not have any real understanding of why it is the way it is. So just imagine that this is line one and just imagine that that's line two. Are we able to imagine? If you can't imagine that's fine, it's on the board as a diagram. Now, second part is, suppose we want to find the shortest distance. Let's just suppose that the shortest distance is that there, where it's always going to be perpendicular. Can we say that that's perpendicular? Absolutely. That might look like the shortest distance, but it's not because it's coming out of the board. So what we want to do is, firstly, we want to find the vector that connects this point and this point, let's suppose that this point over here is A and this point over here is B. So what we're going to do is we're going to find, firstly, where are, where are points A and B located? Secondly, we're going to find the vector between points A and B and then we're going to find the magnitude of vector AB and hence, find the shortest distance. Sounds cool? Wonderful. Okay, first thing that we need to attack is we need to think to ourselves what do we know about this line over here except for the fact that it's the shortest path between R1 and R2. How's it related to R1 and R2? It's perpendicular to both of them. So, if I said the direction of this line here, AB, is going to be W. How could we find that vector there? Vector W, direction vector. A, B. A, B, not quite. In fact, not at all. No. Rather, what we need to think is, this is direction vector. How do you find something that's perpendicular to two vectors? What operation? Starts with C. And it crosses, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, given omega is up to R1 and R2, then what we find is that omega is going to be equal to the cross product of this guy and that guy. So that's 7 minus 2, 1, minus 6, 8, and then minus 4. Does that make sense? So the first of two clues that we're given is that it's perpendicular, and because of that, we are able to know the direction of vector AB. Putting this into our calculator, what do we get?
result. Where'd you get Patrick? I'll go to syntax error. Oh, I didn't get a syntax error. That's well. That look took myself. So if you put it in memory and you're summoning it as vec a vec b, then you use vector. If you're keying it in, yeah. in the like actual keying it in, then you don't need to write vec. Remember, you've got to have the comma separating the two. Otherwise, it looks like multiplication. Ready? Yes. Same reasonable. Yeah, so absolutely. W here is the direction of this vector. Yep. Now, second thing, we know that we're looking at vector a. B. Is there some way we could figure out what A and B is? Yes. Where is point A? At 1 1 plus 7 lambda comma 2 take 2 lambda comma 3 plus lambda and this guy over here Where's this guy at? Three. Hey, that's you, mate. Oh, take. Take six. Yep. One plus eight. Two, take four. So these are our points. We don't know exactly where they are, so we just got to lead them in terms of lambda and mu. Now, the second part, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, determine AB algebraically. Holy moly. I guess that's a comma. So we already know what A and B are, just not definitively. So let's just say AB and AB. A, B is going to be firstly B, which is 3, take 6, mu, uh, 1 plus 8, mu, then 2, take 4, mu. Next part, we've got to subtract what A is, in this case, this guy over here. So that's going to be minus 1, minus 7, lambda then minus two plus two lambda, then minus three take lambda. 
That's your AV. Collect like terms. You guys haven't been told to do that in a while. So it's going to be 6 mu take 7 lambda and then plus 2. Next, 8 mu plus 2 lambda and then take 1. And then finally, 4 mu take lambda and then it will be minus 1. We all right with that? So that gives us our position vector. That doesn't look right. That gives us our position vector. So A and B. Final thing we need to do is we need to relate the direction vector and this vector together. What relationship are we expecting to see between the direction vector W here and the position vector AB here? What's their relationship? Parallel. Parallel. They won't be coincident, but they will be parallel. Now, because they're parallel, What we know is that AB is going to be equal to KW. Does that make sense? Where K is a non-zero, hopefully a real number. If it's complex, we're in trouble and beyond the scope of the course. So what we need to do is we simply just solve this. So it's going to be K, where K is going to be 0, 22, 44. And then AB is going to be some systems of equations. So this one is going to be minus 2 equals negative mu take 7 lambda plus 0 k. Second equation is going to be 1 8 mu plus 2 lambda uh, take 22 k. Then the final one is going to be 1 Were you happy with that? And you could also write that in an augmented matrix and do row reduction to solve it if you choose. However, we're not doing that today because that's not today's learning. What is the most effective way to solve a system of three equations with three unknowns? Chopping calculator. Boom! Full marks to Patrick there. CT4, A+. So we just say up we come to the calculators, menu, equation, uh, simultaneous, three unknowns. So you should get something like that. Yeah, well, yeah good job. And then it's on like Donkey Kong. Clear your memory, throw in your coefficients, just like it's not shown on the board. You throw in A, B, C, then D. Just like that. Just like that, except not like it's shown on the board. Chucking is negative two as negative two or is negative two? 
-hmm. Negative two. Just keep in mind I've rearranged these equations to make it fit in our calculator like that. Solve what beautiful values. We know a value for oops. What did we get from you? Which is the only value we actually need to solve this? Um. Oh, we need two. So we need these two here. Okay, final part. I'm going to put the calculator on the big screen. And I'll show you a way in which I would tackle this question in this situation here to minimize the amount of error that can occur. So let's just have this on. It's a really long calculation, isn't it? So I might argue it's too long. Bingo. All right, now that we've got those macros installed, let us put it in as it's shown on the board. So we're going to go to math, mathvec, and then it's just two three by one matrices. Actually, no, we don't even. We can just do one. All right. So, AB is shown as minus 6 mu take 7 lambda 
plus 2. Funky is happening there. They're hollow. Are we okay with that? So the answer is zero, negative three over five, and negative six over five. That's the first part. Next part is let us store that in a value. Let's put it inside of C. I guess it doesn't let us do that. No. All right, whatever. Well, at least you've got the vector. So the vector is going to be whatever it said it was. Then if you just want to compute that, all right, we go exit. Exit, options, map back, go across. We're looking for the, I think it's a norm. Three root five over five. Why is it the norm? I don't know, it's just what they call it. What is the norm? The norm gives us the uh, length of the vector. Does that make sense? Yep. Can we just accept it? Alright, just accept it. That's, that's in there, it's in memory, and that's it for now. Alright, that's it. Okay, that's cool. Now, let's have a look at what this looks like visually. So, those are all the calculations. That's how you find the shortest path between two vectors. It's probably going to be a large question in a test if you've got it in there and have a lot of marks associated with it. So, it's a good idea to memorize how to do it. There's probably other ways to do it as well. It's just, that's the way it goes. Um, looking at this visually, if we put in the values, so we're going to have, Let's say point A is at one, two, three, and the A direction, let's call it A, is at seven, negative two, one. Then the line is going to be A and A. So there's your first line. Second one's going to be line B. Let's call it 312. Direction B is going to be vector. Input it as a point. Is that reasonable? Yep. Okay. So our direction vector we came up with that is going to link the two together are going to be A cross B. And does that look like the line sort of perpendicular between them? No, I guess it was that way. Okay. And we said that A B is going to be do we have a value for vector AB? Yeah. Um, zero. 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 Three on five. Six on five. What was it, sorry? Zero. Oh, I just stuffed it up. Z 
zero. or the length of a b what is this crap? the length of v is going to be 2.54 is that what we got Sorry, so the shortest path is going to be CD. So let's delete all this. Okay, do we know what uh, the points are? What points? A and B. I and guess then so. A is It's going to be 1 plus, let's just set. Um, pick a letter. B. 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 B is going to be whatever mu was. So minus 3 over 110. And U can be 17 over 55. So what that means is A, which I'm going to call C in here, is going to be at location 1 plus 7 V, U, V, v plus uh, 2 minus 2 V, U. U. We can't mix U's and V's here. Let me just say they're already well. If it's not on the line, we've got it backwards. Is it on the line? I think that might be on the line. That's, the line. That's on the line. Okay, and D can be um, 3 minus. V. 1 plus A. V. 2 minus 4. V. Is that on the line? Yeah. I think that might be on the line. So. You reckon? I reckon I are. Let's hope so. Oh, that was pretty good. Hey! Yes. That one was very well. Yeah. More yeah. difficult than me for. Just long. Just really long. And you need to not make the mistake I did. Let's get rid of A and B. Causes. Is that cool? Yeah. So the process involved here is that you need to first find the direction vector by taking the cross product between the direction vectors of the lines you're given. After that, you go down a different route where you find the value of vector AB algebraically and then given that the direction vector you just found is going to be parallel to the position vector AB. You're able to build a system of three equations with three unknowns. From there, you can use your, you can choose to use your calculator to solve, or if you really want, or if the question is telling you to, you can use row reduction to solve it. I would recommend it unless it asks you to. Yeah. 
row reduction, what we did yesterday. Yeah, right, echelon form. Echelon. Any questions? No. Seem like something we could do with minimal errors after enough practice. Potentially. Oh, you hope. I want to change that. Potentially do it yes we can. <laughs> yes, that is how it's the more practice. Mm. You don't know me, son. Oh.